Hi everyone, this is Greg Snyder with Nerd Caliber. We are here at Aresia 2016 in downtown Boston. And I had the privilege today of sitting down with award-winning author, prolific blogger, and fellow bacon enthusiast, John Scalzi. Hi, John. Hi. How are you? I am doing very well. How are you today? I'm doing very well. It's been a really great con here at the region. I've had a wonderful time. Excellent. Yeah. Still, uh, still with us after four straight days? Wow. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's been it's been quite a lot. I mean, it's been very good, but it is one of those things that when you are the uh, guest of honor, um, you're the performing monkey. Yes, indeed. And uh, I don't mind being the performing monkey, but it is definitely a thing that after I'm done, I will go and I'll probably sleep for two days straight. For people that don't know, uh, several of John's books are in TV development right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Red Shirts, mm -hmm. which love the sweatshirt, by the way. That's Thank fantastic. you. Thank you. Um, sorry, their season ended the way it did. Well, you know, Red Shirts are always doomed. <laughs> Um, so Red Shirts is in development on FX, is that correct? It was being developed on FX, okay. yes. Uh, and the, well it's going to be called Ghost Brigades, but based on the Old Man's World universe. Right. I guess is the best way to put that. Uh, anything new you can tell us? I haven't seen much news recently. Well, the thing about uh, Hollywood is of course they love to make the big announcement of we've optioned this or this is going to happen and then you have the actual development process which can take years and years and years and years. We're actually on year seven of development of uh, the Old Man's War slash Ghost Brigade thing. It was first a movie and now it's TV. Um, and so in the meantime, what I, I what I concentrate on is every time it gets option, they're like, here's a check. It's like, all right, I'll take your lousy money. Don't I, don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. but um, And the thing is, is, it's an opportunity. Opportunity, some of them pan out, some of them don't. You don't sweat it. You enjoy the process. If something actually happens and they make it into a TV series, great. Um, but it, in the meantime, I've got novels to write, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, writers, it's, it's really interesting being a, a science fiction writer or any sort of writer, you know, quite frankly, uh, is that um, our sense, our sort of fame is highly constrained. Like, I come to a convention and I'm having a good time at the convention uh, and I'm here and I am having uh, an audience here and they're very excited that I'm here and they know who I am and I go home and nobody cares <laughs> and I go to the uh, store and nobody cares nobody shows up on my lawn nobody cares I worry you know you have that great you know, if I win the lottery worry that you know if the stuff goes on to TV um, then all of a sudden you become identifiable like George Martin is identifiable or Neil Gaiman is identifiable or any of those sorts of things. And part of you is like, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But on the other hand, you would like, I would like to experience at least a little bit of that pain. So, you know, you, you kind of see how you go with that. Heinlein, Asimov, sure, the sure. Masters. Any golden age people you're especially in love with? Well, I mean, obviously Heinlein. I mean, at the in the uh, acknowledgments for Old Man's War, I thank him because if I didn't, people would be like, come on oh, now. Man. Yeah. Um, so he was one that I always really liked. Douglas Adams, you know, because humor and science mm -hmm. fiction. Um, Stephen Bruce, who wrote fantasy, but he wrote fantasy with dialogue that's felt almost contemporary and which was easy for me to get into mm -hmm. uh, and one of the great highlights of, of my life actually was meeting Stephen Bruce for the first time being introduced to him and my editor who is a good friend of his introduced me as this is John Scalzi he writes you know military science fiction and so he and I chatted about stuff and talked about craft and all this other sort of stuff and we started talking about dialogue and he said oh yeah well you know and I said well yeah when I was reading Old Man's War and, and, and blah 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 and he says stop you wrote Old Man's War? <laughs> and he turns to Patrick, you didn't tell me he wrote Old Man's War? He says, I told you he wrote Military Science. Like, but that is Old Man's War. That was great. I was going to blurb it. Why didn't you let me blurb it? I gave you the book to blurb. You didn't blurb it. Well, I should have. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there just going, squee! Right? Because this is somebody whose work and craft I admired so much, um, you know, Geeking out like, about so my stuff, have to say, exactly. Like, you have to write. So, right. I know I go into reading Robert Heinlein knowing that it was 60 years ago, so I don't expect him to um, necessarily have the same attitudes and have the same um, speech mannerisms and so on and so forth uh, that uh, people are now. And you know, to some extent, um, I think it's good. In, in some extent, I think it's good that we are as a uh, 
you know, as a genre, beginning to move away from the golden age writers. They will always be read, they will always be important, they will always be influential, but the golden age um, is now 40, 50, 60 years ago, um, and what's being written now is some, some pretty amazing yeah. stuff. We were talking earlier, uh, we were talking earlier about the wealth of pretty incredible female characters we've had in books, movies, TV sure. uh, in the last year or so. Any personal favorites? Uh, in terms of female characters? Um, I have actually, I really did enjoy, and it's so cliche at this point, but I really did enjoy Furiosa and, and Mad Max Fury Road. Um, and, you know, it, it was the observation that it was actually her film. She was the one who had the journey, whereas mm -hmm. Max was her sidekick. Um, and, you know, and I think, that's, I think that's kind of absolutely correct. I mean, it's called Mad Max because that's the marketing name. Yeah, but, you know, quite honestly, it was her film, and Charlize Theron did just a wonderful job with her. Um, I do think it's important that we had uh, Rey as the central character for, for Star Wars. Um, and, I, and I think there are a lot of dudes who got their, you know, got their wads in a bunch yeah, about it. Twist. Yeah, you know, but, you know, quite frankly, um, you know, the, I, what really annoys me is the idea that all these, all these dudes can't see themselves in Furiosa or can't see themselves in Rey or can't sympathize or have an interest in those characters because they're not exactly like them. It's like, dude, that is your loss. You know, mm -hmm. it's like speaking as a nerd, right? You know, the same kid who was when he was seven years old who saw a lot of himself in Luke Skywalker now at 46 years old sees a lot of what he wanted to be when he was a kid in Rey. You know, and it does not diminish or lessen me to have that same sort of feeling of like this could be someone I could identify with simply because that character uh, is a woman and I'm a man. Mm -hmm. Anything you remember specifically when you were sort of you first discovered fiction that was like, yes, this is, and it just it just hooked you, just grabbed you. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I. For me, a lot of the Robert Heinlein did that, and the reason for that simply was that he wrote characters that seemed like believable human beings. I mean, they were obviously, you know, even then, you know, because I grew up in the 70s and 80s, so even then there was a little bit of time, you know, time divide there. But, um, but you could see that these were real characters having real conversations, and, and it seemed like um, that even though the ideas of science fiction were there. What I really cared about, what I really liked, were the characters. Uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you to John Scalzi for sitting down with us. It's uh, late on day four at a convention. I'm sure you're looking forward to going home and sleeping in your own bed and seeing your family. Yep. This is Greg Snyder with Nerd Caliber at Aresia 2016. Have a great time, and we'll see you again soon.